Have you been looking for a more minimal alternative to sudo? Because quite frankly, sudo is a bit of a bloated program. It's quite large in size. It has a ton of configuration options because, you know, it is a very powerful program. But for especially desktop Linux users, we don't need 99% of those options that are available in sudo. All we want is just to be granted root privileges every now and then so we can install and remove software, update the system, and maybe edit a config file every now and then. And there is a much more sensible alternative to sudo. It is a program called Doaz. Now for me, Doaz was available in the Arch user repository, the AUR. If you are not on an Arch-based Linux distribution, Doaz may or may not be available to you in your distro's repos. Doaz was originally created by the OpenBSD guys, so Doaz is very common on the BSD operating systems. Not that common, though, on Linux. If you're on an Arch-based system, you're good. Just pick it up from the AUR. If you're on a non-Arch-based Linux distribution, what you may have to do is go to GitHub and grab the source and just compile it yourself with, you know, your typical make and then make install. Shouldn't be that difficult. Again, it's a very small program. Now, no doubt, some of you guys are probably asking, what's the point? Why replace sudo with do as? Well, the OpenBSD guys, why did they create this? It's because they came to the conclusion that sudo was, again, it's a bloated program. It's kind of complicated, to be honest. Anybody that's ever had to edit the sudoers file knows that that thing is not exactly user friendly. So I found a blog post from one of the original creators of Doaz, and he goes through exactly his thought process, why Doaz needs to exist, and why it's a better alternative to sudo. Just reading briefly here, quote, The core of the problem is really that some people like to use sudo to build elaborate sysadmin infrastructures with highly refined sets of permissions and checks and balances. But some people, like me, use sudo to get a root shell without remembering two passwords. And again, that's what most Linux users that we're talking about today, BSD users too, but if you're using these operating systems, especially on the desktop, that's all you want. You just want to become root every now and then. You just want to be granted root privileges so you can do a quick install or remove of software. So you don't even really need a, a big, bloated, complicated program like sudo for this. So what you really want is something a lot more, dare I say it, suckless in philosophy. And that is what Doaz is. It's much more suckless in spirit. I'm going to pull up a terminal. And typically with sudo, when you install Linux, you know, you have to add your home user to the sudoers file. And to do this, you run a command called vi sudo. Now you have to be root to run this command. So I'm actually going to do sudo vi sudo. And this is that file. Now, this is kind of a long, lengthy file. There's a ton of comments, again, explaining various options that you can do to this file. This is complicated, right? If you are brand new to Linux user, this is complicated as hell. I've been a Linux user on the desktop as far as my main daily driver for 12 years now. I don't know even half of the stuff that's in this sudoers file. Typically, all desktop Linux users are worried about is going down here and user privileges. The root user should be granted all privileges. The wheel group, typically you want to grant them all privileges. And then you want to make sure your home user, in my case, my home user is called DT. I add DT to the wheel group. Let me exit out of this before I do some damage here. And I'm going to clear the screen. Now let me show you my configuration file for do as. So let me open this in Vim. So I'm going to do Vim slash Etsy slash do as dot conf. And this is it. One line. Now that one line didn't exist. It's actually, this config file does not exist when you install do as. You actually have to create the config file yourself and it can be as simple as one line. You see my one line permit dt, the user dt, as root. That's it. <laughs> That's all I want. I'm on a single user system. DT is the only user on this system. So that's really all I need. Now I could, there's more complicated stuff you could do with that config. I mean, the sky's the limit. 
as far as what you can do on the config, granting different users different permissions, uh, maybe only granting certain users root permissions in certain directories or running certain commands. Like you, you can do that kind of stuff if you want to. But for the most part, if you're just a typical desktop Linux user, and especially if you're on a single user machine, yeah, just permit your username as root. Boom, you're done. And now you can do anything as root by simply invoking do as. So let me run something as do as so you guys can see this in action. So let me run something that I have to be root to run. So I have the locate program installed on my system. You guys have seen me run the command locate and then maybe something like name a file or name of directory. You know, and it locates that file for me. Now the locate command uses a scan of your system, a database, if you will. You actually have to run the command update db every so often to update the locate command. You have to do this as root. So typically that command is run sudo space update db, but let's run it as do as. And of course it's asking for the root password. There we go. Now if I wanted to update the system on, of course, Arch, you do pacman syu, so I could do a do as space pacman space dash capital S lowercase y lowercase u. And let me hit enter. And I get an error. It says invalid option dash dash and then capital S. So do as, you have to be particular here. If you're giving do as an argument and then a bunch of flags to actually run that command, you have to do do as space dash dash space. And then you can give pacman and all the arguments you want to it. So pacman space dash syu. And again, we have to enter our password. You notice I had to enter my password each time. It's not like sudo as far as remembering the password. I'm going to decline that update uh, unless you want it to be. There is an option in that config file. I could go back in the doas.conf and tell it to not ask me for a password every single time. You know, it will remember it if I just entered it, kind of like sudo does. Let's see if I can bring up the man page for do as, and I'll show you some of the options. So there's not a lot of flags to do as. So you see, there's really like five, six flags. And I don't think you would ever use any of these as a typical user. I, I would never probably use any of these flags except maybe the dash u flag. What that would do is if you wanted to run do as, but not run it as root, you know, you wanted to switch to a different user. You could do do as space dash u and then the name of user. But since most people simply want to run it as root, you know, that's the default and you don't have to give any kind of flags or switches to run do as as root. It always runs as root unless you specify a different user. And the other flag, of course, is the double dash here. Reading about that, any dashes after a combined double dash will be interpreted as part of the command to be run or its parameters, not an argument passed to do as itself. Let me quit out of that. I'm going to go back to the browser for a second because I also found a man page online here and it also included some examples of what you can do in the config file. For example, permit persist set environment and then, you know, where the package path is. I'm assuming this is uh, an example for one of the BSDs. And the persist is, I think, for the password. You can either do persist or no pass for the password, you know, depending on whether you want it to remember the password or not, you know, that, that pseudo kind of remembrance. And then it looks like we are giving a user named Aja permission to install packages from a preferred mirror. Looking at the second line, it looks like we are permitting everybody that's in the wheel group to do something here. So if you're on a multi-user system, that might be the better way to go instead of permit user dt in my case as root i could have just permit everybody in the wheel group as root especially if i have several users on the system but they're all part of the wheel group that might be the better way to go now let me get back to the terminal and you guys don't need to know exactly what this command is this very long convoluted command i'm basically doing a couple of queries in pacman and piping it you know through awk <laughs> also gripping a couple of times but but really what i want to do is i want to grip sudo all right, so sudo, the installed size of sudo on my system is 3.36 megabytes. Let me run that same command, but this time I'm gonna search for do as. Do as is only taking up 39.4 kilobytes. 3.36 megabytes, 39.4 kilobytes. So again, that's part of the bloat. 
that is included with sudo. Again, you can do a lot with sudo, but for most users, most users just need to grant their home user root privileges every now and then. So really, why not do as? Do as probably should be the default on every Linux distribution, honestly. If you need sudo, anybody can install sudo. I mean, there's no problems going out there and grabbing sudo if you really need it. But I think more distros probably are going to start including do as by default because already the BSDs are doing it. There's several BSD operating systems out there that are already shipping with do as rather than sudo out of the box. So I've got do as on my system. I'm going to start using it. I may go ahead and remove sudo from my system since I don't really see the need for it. Now, before I go, this show was produced by Michael, Chris, DJ Donnie, Dylan, George Haplow, Nate Lambda, Mitchell, Omri, Rob, Sean, and Willie. These guys, they are the producers of the channel. Without these guys, this episode about this awesome program called Do As wouldn't have been possible. The show was also brought to you by all these other names you're seeing on the screen right now, that ever-growing list of names. Those are all my supporters over on Patreon because... This channel is community sponsored. It's the community that supports my work. You guys, this channel is for you. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider doing so. Just look for DistroTube over on Patreon, guys. All right, peace.